when we started research for the about the Narragage Railways in County Antrim, we decided to come and have a yarn with Joe McClintock, who is now living in Brookshane. Joe, would you mind telling me, just for a start, what age are you? Well, if I left in September, I'd be 89 years old of age. That's <laughs> some, some, something to be proud of. No, you didn't, you didn't, you, you didn't always live in Brookshane, you weren't born in Brookshane. No, I was born in Bonnegarvey, Bonnegarvey Terrace. Yeah, is that, is that down by the clock? That's where the clock is, Where, where the clock is, yeah. that's what they call Bonnegarvey Terrace. That's it, yeah. And I, I was talking to you previously and you said that you had a lot of memories of the narrow gauge railway up at Ballygarvey Station, the Parkmore Railway. Maybe you could oh. tell us a wee bit about... Oh yes, the, 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 the Parkmore Railway was a great uh, experience in my childhood days. We, where we, we used to go lane to school and we used to run to get on below the arches to hear the train go over the top, you know. Uh, and then uh, during the holidays, we used to always go to the grandmother's and her we farm the ground and the land lay into the railway, you see. Yeah. And uh, the grandmother, we would have been always on the holidays and stayed up the grandmother and my aunt. And, the, and she would have been to Valamina with her cape and her cloak and her bonnet on and a wee hamper basket to Valamina to do the shop. On the wee narragage train. On the wee train. And, and she would do the wee path to the, uh, the Bonagarvey station. And uh, but she headed off. We would have just have been filling her in at my grandmother's place, mm. and, and then later on, the whistle would have blew the train coming up the uh, Beatty's Bridge. Oh, um, where's Beatty's Bridge? Uh, you know, that's where the, where the whistle went, you know. Yeah, where was it? That was in the Ballygarvey Road. That was the bridge over where the train ran under. I under the Road. Yeah, yeah. And then my aunt would have said. There, there's Granny coming now, and we ran down, and we were always warned not to go over the ditch because that was dangerous. And uh, the train would have stopped, and you saw the people getting off at the station, and my grandma would have hopped over the ditch, and a wee humper basket. Oh, home again. A home again. Were, were there many people who used that? Like, oh, yeah, you? there was quite a lot of people who used the wee station. Yeah. Now, that station was where? Well, you would have got to the station from, you could have got from two areas, from the Ballygarvey Road. Yeah. After you passed where I left at the terrace, the first road on your left, we called it the Parade Road. Yeah. And that took you up to the, the station. The station was up with Parade Road. Yeah. Well, then you could have got from the Cushion Door Road when you went to a place they called Kenny's Corner, one road took you to the Curtain Road or Cemetery, and another road took you down to the Ballygarvey Station. Yeah, so you could, you could approach it from two directions. That's right. You Sorry, we well, could approach it from Brookshean on the Ballygarvey yeah. Road to the same as they. But those, those, you told me one. You told me one day I was speaking to you about it. You told me about the station itself and about the station house. The the, the old house is not there anymore. No. Is it? there's a new house built, but the railway crossed the road at that point. Yeah, it was a, what you crossing. call a level crossing. That's right. Of that. Yeah. And you said there was some sort of a wee path then underneath the road. That's right, there's a path to the right of the, uh, the railway station. There was the, the cattle path. And then when the gates were closed for the train coming, the f farmers were coming up with the cattle, they could have went down and below. Underneath. They saved any confusion at the gates. Yeah. And it was, uh, McCulloch was the man. Uh, Ollie McCulloch, he was the man who looked after the gates. His wife yeah. did, he worked on the railroad. Yeah. But she looked after the closing and the opening of the gates. There wasn't a big lot of motor traffic about in them days. No, there was no, there was no motor traffic at all. As far as, as, far as I, I can re remember, there were the only people that I knew had a motor in those days was Wilson's that owned the mall and Morton's the flower mall. Yeah. And they, they both lived down Bally Yarby Way. Yeah, one well, left on the left hand side of where I left, and another left on the right hand side. Yeah. We'll maybe have a word about them later on when we talk about Bally Garvey, but you were saying there, what year would that have been with you? What, what sort of span of time were you talking I about? I would be beating a bit, that would be, I would say maybe, that would be over 80 years. Yeah. Because we're roughly running about maybe 80, 
I was maybe a boy about maybe seven or eight years old then. Yeah. The according to all It would be it would be I would be over eighty it would be. According to all the books you read that really closed to the stations closed in nineteen thirty. So yeah. it, would, it would have been before that. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. I just was having a wee look one night there and according to the, all the records, all the stations closed for good in 1930. So it must have been long before that. Yeah. Oh, I no, that, that, that would be a way. I can go back, uh, say, 80 years. Mm. That would be eight years ago, maybe a wee bit more. I, well, that's further than I could go. <laughs> <laughs> that's further than I could go. Well, it was the station, was it just sort of a wee single wee platform? Yeah, and then there's a wee, there's a wee waiting room. Oh, they had a waiting room? Oh, yes, there's a wee waiting room on the, on the left, just uh, where the train pulled in, there's a wee, mm. wee waiting room where the people sat mm. and the wet day or when the rain was on. There wouldn't be too big a staff, I think. No, there was there was just there was uh, the station master. Just the, the station master and the man was on the was the, on the train and the, the guard. That was about that. That was about. You it. told me about your mother, how she dressed and all when she. Yeah. Oh, my grandmother. Yeah, your oh. grandmother. Oh, she was she she was very nicely dressed. She had a lovely, a black cape and a, and a long skirt way down to the ground and and a red flannel and petticoat. When she was coming over the deck, she always would have saw her lifting up her skirt to go over and the red flannel and petticoat. And a lovely bonnet tied below her chin with a, a bow below her chin. Folk really dressed in those days to go to town. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they didn't go all the time, you know. No. They didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't just in case it was a, an emergency, you know, or some big thing or something they had to get. If they had to go, it was a case of going yeah, when you had to. that's right. <laughs> when that's you right. had to. Well, that, that with that ra railway, I traced it as far as the Cushendall Road. Now, after the Cushendall Road, did it pass over Fry's Road? Was there a bridge? There was, aye. A there bridge on Fry's Road. There was a bridge on Fry's Road, and then uh, over Fry's Road, it come up the back of the, the houses at Dunfean. Yeah. And then it crossed the road over at Orangefield House, that was Mrs. Beatty's. Uh, under that, the road, that yeah. was for that arch, was it you yeah. were talking about a while ago? That's right, Beatty's Bridge. Yeah. I remember people called Beatty Living in there, maybe not the same Beatty. Oh, people, that's the same Beatty, that's the same Beatty. There was a family of them. And, and then it went up through over the parade road. And I did, uh, over the, what we call it, the Protestant Lane. Yes. There's, a, there's a bridge there. Oh, well, um, that, that's something I was going to ask you about. You mentioned to me one day about the Protestant London, as we talked yeah, about. Yeah, that's right. And the Protestant Row, could you tell me a wee bit of it? Ah, oh, yeah, uh, we, we, we passed that on the way to school, it was just a, a rough lane. Yeah. And there was, four, uh, there was three houses on it in those days. And, and there was a woman, Redmond, lived in the end house, and a man, Kyle. He was a man who broke the stones for the roads in them days. There was no such mm. thing as uh, th they broke the stones with a hammer. And, uh, and then it was a man, McBurney, lived in the end house. But they said that, that the reason it was called the Protestant Lane was because at one time the Ballygarvey Lodge met in one of the houses there. Uh, that was the that was what I had learned when I was younger. That's why it was called cool. the Protestant Lane. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose it's as good a reason as any. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And then when you're on up a wee bit from Ballygarvey, from Ballygarvey Station, there was another station. A wee bit further up the lane, you mentioned Aye, that. Aye, that was that was uh, Ballyclough. Ballyclough station. And where where exactly was that? Where did you go? Uh, you went up the Cushendall Road, didn't you? Aye, you got the Cushendall Road uh, as far as uh, what we call the Letterbox Road. Yeah. And one road took you up to Craigie Warren Orange Hall, and another road took you down into uh, Ballyclough station. station. And then you could have got it from. Uh, from the Brush from Brushian area, you could have got it uh, and turned at the Norton Road and go up that way there, uh, up the you know, what we call the Norton Boy Road, yes, and turned off to the left, and that took you up to the the Valley Cloven Station. So that was roughly the layout of the railway from you may say the Cushendall Road across Fry's Road, under the Valley Gary Road, across the Parade Road. And up to Ballyclough and that's up to Ballyclough station. That, that was that. Yeah. 
And I, he, he also told me about the time they were lifting the rails. He told me about having a battle with carry on with the rails. Aye, well, we, we, it was a crowd of us. We had, we had to make our own fun in them days. And we went, went up to, we would have, after we finished, uh, we maybe were teenagers, we maybe were working, you know, because you started working there when you were 14. Yeah. But we went up to Ballycloughan Station, and the men always, the men that was lifting the rails, uh, they had a wheel called a bogey. And we were able to get the wheels onto the rails again, and then there was a big flat thing like a hay cart, and that was, we set it on. And there was a hole doing the centre of the cart, or doing the side of the wheel, and a big board went down a big uh, post, and that was the brakes. But uh, it was, you know, it was, it was silly because we could have been cowed. <laughs> but we, we, we got uh, on, got the girls on, there was girls at McWilliams and Worthington's and, and fellas and my brothers, and we got on and a started, far, started her off. How far would you run up the lane? We landed, we come down the way. Oh, down, we're doing hell, you down towards the town. We, we landed down at the back of the Ballymena Cemetery. Oh, you want the ferry back? Oh, how, how did you get back again? Well, we just had to push it back again. You weren't able to ride it back? No, no, had to push it back. Oh, yeah. That's right. And that way, really, we ran alongside the cemetery wall, didn't it? And then we in the back of the, the, the cemetery. That's I remember, see, I remember being there away during the war years. Out going to the Drury Road. Uh, Oh no, there was a bridge over the Derry Road that's as right. well. Yeah, that's right. There's sort of remains of the banks down the Derry Road yet. And yeah. then I went across and went on to the Valley Money Road. That's right. Just beside General Motorworks. Like that, that's right. And from there on I went straight across and on to the Cully Road. That's right. Just at the end of the old where the old Cully, the old Carnani Road. That's near the slaughterhouse. Uh, yeah. just nearly beside the slaughterhouse right. and then from there it was Andy Ballymena Station so that was a, more or less the track of the rail, train right from Ballymena up to Bal. What was the next station then after Ballyclough? Do you remember? next station after Ballyclough was, I'm uh, not too sure, exactly sure whether it was a, uh, a station or a halt, it was Island Town the corner. Yes, I think I've read where that was, uh, that was actually a halt. Oh, I think it was station. a halt uh, and then after that was Martinstown. Yeah. Martinstown Station. Wasn't that known at one time earlier on as Nogganulli, Nogganulli? Aye, well that's, that was, that's what you call Nogganulli area there. Aye, right? I and think the station was called Nogganulli and then later on it was changed to yeah. Martinstown. It was the same place but it was referred to in some books as Nogganulli, yeah. some places as Martinstown. Then the next one after that was was uh, the, cro uh, the Crossroads Station. Yeah. That was the one that we went to look at one day. That's right, yeah. And then we had it on up the next one, but I wasn't sure where it was at uh, Cargan. I will, I think, actually, you would have had uh, Rath Kenny before that. Oh, 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 Rath Kenny was I before Martinstown. Ah, oh, yeah, it was before Martinstown. Ah, uh, after you left, uh, after you left Ballycloak and then done, done Island, or Islandstown, then that was Rath Kenny then. Yeah. That's where all the butter came in. That was the big station on, was the, on the line. Uh, that was really what it was built for, that really, uh, for Bally. I uh, well, for I think Kenny. maybe uh, the part more mines had a lot to do yeah. with as well. Uh, we were speaking to your wife today and she was saying about a mine up in the Elgin direction. We were yeah. talking about where my father was born. Sure, it uh, hadn't anything to do with the part more. No. Railway it was but too far away from it. Oh, well, it was too far away from it. The the uh, the iron ore was brought down there with a steam engine. Yeah. And a trailer behind it. But uh, take it back again. Just that was just I wanted to ask you about that mine whether it was had nothing to do with the railway or not. You were talking about some of your for a better word antics up the railway. Oh, <laughs> why? <laughs> well, we. We used to go up, you see, up the railway, uh, and then there were great strawberries, wild strawberries up the railway. Oh, they were terrific. Because, you see, there were no, nobody there to disturb them. And we would go up and we would get a, a stalk of grass and we would string the strawberries onto the, onto the string. And we, you had maybe three or four strings and then you brought them home and 
and got them into a wee dish and some sweet milk and boy that was really a yeah. treat in them days you know. Really good stuff. Oh yeah <laughs> and then there was a great, nowadays now you see in them days there were there was hundreds of, of the, them wee birds uh, uh, we would call them yellow yearlings but they call them yellow hammers. Yeah. And now, now that wee bird's nearly extinct, and I have tried round the whole area there to see if there's anything about it, and I can't see any anywhere. The last pair I seen was away near Port Rush. And I was having a picnic, and I heard the wee bird chirping, and says, There's a, a yellow hammer. And, and you, these tell two, me, you tell me there were hundreds of them up around that wee Oh, really hundreds, and they, they, they built their nests and the and the railway slopes. And then they, they got plenty of feeding up lots of seed, you know, because they. The, the seed was nobody touched anything there, but my father, my father, had permission from the railway, and we we had a we kept a cow, and my father had permission from the railway to cut the grass of the railway slopes, all along that old lane, the Protestant lane, and then we were allowed to bring it down into Walsh's field, and we we won that hay, and we had oh, we had as much hay as fed the cow all yeah. winter. See, there were there were no money in them days, there were no. No, I suppose you wouldn't have any idea. That was long before the hungry thirties. Oh. <laughs> oh, there, there were hungry twenties as well. <laughs> That's right, I was aware of it. You wouldn't have any idea of what it would have cost to travel, say, from Ballygarvey to Ballymena. No, I'm I wouldn't sure it wouldn't be a 40 in it. I wouldn't have a clue. No, I just was wondering, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be travelling and paying any here. No, I, you know, I never was on the... You never travelled on no, it, No, really. we couldn't afford to pay uh, to go to the, you had to the train, you had to walk it. But what, what would have happened sometimes was there, whenever the, there would be tourists coming up the railway, we would run up to that bridge at the old lane, and they would have threw uh, pennies out of the, the, the train, but sometimes you got them and sometimes you didn't get them, <laughs> they would get lost, you know. Uh, but uh, it was great fun, you know, uh, and below the bridge, when you heard all the wagons going over the top of the... Over the sleepers. The the and there used to be a saying, and I always think about this, and you'd have heard it distinctly uh, more in the Ballymena area when the team was going to Port Rush. And when she started off, uh, the people had a wee saying, uh, will I make it, will I make it, will I make it, will I make it? And then when she got up over the house, she said, oh, he made it, oh, he made it, oh, he made it. That's the way it just sounded like that. With the wheels ah. and, the, and the track. That's right. Going over all the joints. That's right, that's right. <laughs> will I make it, will I make it, will I make it? Now, he made it, he made it. <laughs>